today's topic is really about compassion, gratitude, reverence, sort of this appreciation of, of the moment and of uh, the beauty and humanity. Um, and one of the things, I'm, uh, I was joking with a friend at lunch how I'm actually a, a pretty third-rate meditator. I'm in the minor leagues and never done very well at it. Uh, but one of the things that happened to me in an experience of meditation that you were directing, and I felt it again, is this, this, this dwelling in compassion. Um, and so I, I wanted to ask you about um, how you think about and consider this mindfulness and compassion dialogue or relationship. What is that? There's an awful lot of talk about it. Uh, I don't actually think about it that much, to tell you the truth. Uh, I try to live it without the words. Yeah. Because I think sometimes the words, you know, carry, you know, sort of concepts and beliefs and a lot of evidence and structure, but it, it's basically a, a narrative. And it can be very useful to tell ourselves a narrative as we try to conform to a particular kind of... Mm, recipe or algorithm that we think will make us better. But from the perspective of the, uh, the non-dual, we're already compassionate. We're good enough as we are. So it's more a question of uncovering our compassion rather than trying to you know, uh, build it up or something like that. So the way I see it is that mindfulness the cultivation of the quality of presence uh, simplifies things an enormous amount because it allows us to actually embody who we already are as opposed to construct some alternative uh, identity for ourselves. And who we already are is compassion. Your, all your data is suggesting that, that it's like the core universal emotion and that it's perhaps it's partly because our our babies need to be cared for in some very profound way for a very long time. And, of course, we, in some ways, prefer our babies to other babies, but in a certain way, we don't. And even the bonobo and the chimp bring up those kinds of feelings. There's a wonderful quotation from Einstein that's in several of my books about recognizing the entire universe in this way and talking about the prison of our own ideas and opinions when we start to separate things and see ourselves as separated from the universe. He describes it as a prison, and then he says our task must, to free must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion. To this is Einstein talking. Widening our circle of compassion to embrace all beings in their beauty. And then he says nobody is able to achieve that completely, but the striving for such achievement is itself a foundation for liberation. He uses the word liberation and inner security. So that's been the sort of vector that I've always taken. That, and it's a good sort of way, if you, especially if you think of yourself as a bad meditator, then a shortcut to being a good meditator, in quotes, is just reminding yourself. You just say to yourself, it's already here. It's already here. It, there's nothing to get. There's no place to go. There's nothing to do. And there's nothing special to attain. Because what's special is already here. It's already attained. And what realizing it means is re re making it real. And how do we make it real? By being present, then we trust that the knowing is itself inherently compassionate. And if you study Dzogchen and Tibetan teachings on Mahamudra and everything, that's the way they talk, that the actual, the spaciousness of the uh, awareness, pure awareness, is compassion.